The first thing I want to do here is introduce the concept of pivot points and discuss a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, I do recommend that you have a uh, understanding of some vector math uh, to you know kind of undertake and explore this method. Uh, but we'll kind of introduce it lightly here as well. Uh, so what is a pivot point? Uh, a pivot point uh, for us is basically an an origin or center around which a transformation will occur. Uh, and this means for things like scaling and rotation, it's the center around which or the point around which we perform our, our transformation. So rotation currently is being centered around the center of this object. Uh, any scaling done right now is also being done around the center of this object. That is our pivot. If I use, uh, if I switch to the 3D cursor here, uh, I can kind of show you that I can use the 3D cursor as the center of my rotation instead, or the center of my scaling instead. And you can see that it's very important where this object, or sorry, where this pivot is located for purposes of our transformations. So I've switched here to the orthographic view so we can kind of discuss a, a quick example uh, from a vertex position standpoint uh, for how we would potentially create a transformation. Uh, so for this case, we're going to treat that our center is, is right here in the center. Uh, and we're going to treat these uh, vertices as like v1, v2, v3, and v4. And for a simple scaling operation, uh, if we want to scale up or scale down, we basically need a direction because if you if I hit S here, you can kind of see where you know these are all kind of occurring. We could even we could even you know click here on the screen and begin drawing lines. Uh, but we can we can fairly easily see that you know this vertex follows this path. We're going to talk about just v1 for example. So we need to create a vector that gives us a direction along this line. And the easiest way to do that is to take v1 minus c, which is our center, and this will give us a directional vector. And the idea then is if we take the normalized version of this vector, we could take a arbitrary value of x, we could take our position v, and if we add them together, this is our this is our function here, f of x equals, then our vector v1, or our position v1, will move along this line somewhere. And so by doing that with all of these, we'll essentially be able to then scale around the center point. Just like that. If our center was somewhere else, for example, if we have this centered on V1, uh, we would have something slightly different. Uh, for this case, at least I can switch my pen color here. That's going to change everything. There we go. Uh, we'll take this. So our, our different cube is going to be V1 minus V1 for this particular point, which is going to equal 0. V1 minus, sorry, V3 minus V1. will equal a different direction. This will equal this downward direction. And we'd have a different, you can kind of already see that if our pivot point was here at this very center, uh, this would result in a different kind of scaling shape, basically, uh, that we would get. Actually, it's kind of more like that. Uh, and so by, by knowing where the center of our geometry is, it's very important. Why is this important, you might ask? Well, if you have a single solid shape here like this, it's not too bad. I mean, you can use you can use your general, you know, on real stuff or anything else. You can still rotate around the center and such here, or you can do scaling based off the center. But the second you have a geometry in which you have, you know, separate discrete forms and you want to treat them, have them act kind of separately and such, uh, then you end up with the issue that if you just have your object center, you can't perform any actions that rotate the individual components of them. 
like you can in this program where if I use individual origin we can see that they're each beginning to rotate around themselves. If I scale, they'll all scale you know, on their own. Outside of a 3D program and inside Unreal basically then when you're, when you're dealing with anything uh, you're basically stuck with your static mesh object literally as a static mesh. It, it treats this all as one thing. Uh, and so if we want to perform any of these kind of individual scaling things, we would have to do it, uh, we'd have to basically bake the information out and save it for where each of these individual pivots live for each of these sections. So how do we save this data? Because uh, each of these cubes has a point in 3D space, it's going to have some point center, uh, basically, that we have to, actually this one's just right exactly there, uh, that we have to store somehow. Well, that's where we, that's where the UVs come in. This is why it's called, you know, UV pivot baking. Uh, a UV map, if I split my screen here, has uh, two data, two points uh, that it can store. It can store an X value and a Y value. And so we utilize extra UV maps because um, ob objects can have more than one UV stored to them. And we'll store an X and a Y in one, and a Z in the other. And then we can combine those later on. And then the concept is that if we treat these, so let's just take this object, for example, here. We would basically treat all of its points as some in, infinitesimally small point, And we would position that point somewhere in space here so that uh, we know this is where its, uh, its pivot lives. You know, we would take this one. You know, scale it down, and this one, scale it down, grab it, and then if I select all of them, you can see that we would have different, uh, each object or each individual object would have a pivot baked to it in some other position in the XY, and uh, in, or eventually Z, that we can store and utilize. So like we can basically manually do those operations for scaling rotation that we saw in the 2D view that I was exploring with you. This is an example uh, prepared mesh uh, from uh, at Clemen Lozar on uh, Twitter that uh, he used or he gave out uh, in his example uh, of a VFX effect. Uh, if we take a look at it here, uh, we can see that uh, uh, we have UV channel zero here, and we have, you know, as we would expect it for all of its uh, UV unwraps. If I go over here and I switch to UV one, or sorry, UV channel two, initially you might you might think there's nothing, but if we zoom out, we can see where we are baking all of our pivot data points to. So these are all kind of existing in space. And then if we go to UV channel three, we have the Z information being stored right there, where we can see where all of the pivot data is on the z-axis. In the next video, we're going to jump into Houdini, and I'm going to show you how to write a, a short script, basically, that will let you do this automatically to a much larger or complex uh, geometry that you have.